Peace and blessings, family. Peace and blessings, man. It's Martha Messenger. We're back with another video. I'm excited to make this one. This one's going to be about seven signs of an evil spirit in your life. This also not just applies with, you know, dealing with other people, like their spirits, their demons, but also maybe things that you're opening up uh, through your disobedience, through willful sin, through through a non-repented lifestyle, et cetera, et cetera. So let's get this go. This is the number one sign of an evil spirit in your life. And I know a lot of you guys can relate to this video. A lot of people watching this video will be able to relate to this. So number one is when you give your life to God and someone in your life continues to tempt you, okay? Remember, this video is about evil spirits that will either work through yourself, through your disobedience, and also um, some people, you know, the evil spirits working through them because best believe when the devil can't get to you, he's gonna try to use someone other, someone around you. So you guys ever notice um, when God's waking you up, remember, because many are called, few are chosen. So pretty much when God's calling you, hits you up on speed dial and you answer the call, okay? Many people are called, but only few are chosen, which pretty much means that many people get called by God to receive internal salvation, but many reject the calling because they don't want to live their life for him, okay? So they don't want to have a lifestyle that resembles God. They don't want to, you know, honor the Bible pretty much, okay? So when you see that, okay, like let's let's repent from whatever we're doing, right? Whatever, you know, you know the sins that we commit. And you tell your friend, or even it could be a family member, you could tell your friend, your family member, or your girlfriend, your boyfriend, whatever the case may be, right? And you tell them like, oh, I'm not trying to do that no more. And you're very respectful about it because a true friend, a true, you know, a real person in your life, they, when they see you trying to give up something, they're going to have respect for you. Even though they're not doing that, they're like, oh, okay, no, because I love you. You're, you're my brother or you're my sister, whatever. Like it's, it's love, you know, but these people got those demons on them. They can't accept that. And they're going to continuously try to get you to go back into your old ways. Best believe, guys, that is a demon working through them, okay? As, or it could be a Satan's children, a child of Satan, working through that person to get you to go back into your old ways because the devil does not want you to receive salvation. He wants you to stay in darkness, okay? He wants you to stay caught up like the rest of this world just lost, okay? Spiritually dead. So whenever you see, when you give your life to God, you give your life to Jesus, okay? And someone in your life continues to tempt you to sin, even though you already told that person repeatedly, I'm not trying to do this no more. I'm a changed person. Uh, I'm trying to walk this narrow path. You know, I'm trying to, you know, I'm reading my Bible. I'm doing what it says. I know I struggle. I might, you know, I'm, I'm not perfect yet, but I'm still trying my best. And they just, you know, they laugh at you. They mock at you or they think you're just like a joke. Okay. And then they try to tempt you to sin because the Bible makes it clear that God never tempts us. That's the devil. So when someone is tempting you to sin, someone is tempting you to rebel against God, of rebel against the commandments, um, you know, just live a life where even though God has already, because remember when, you, when, you, when God's calling you, he's letting you know what you have to give up. He's letting you know who you have to, you know, not just not just your sins, but also certain people, okay? Certain people that you were friends when you're in darkness and once he starts to draw more and more into the light, God will clearly show you those people for who they are. And once you start to ignore God and you think that, oh, no, I, you know, you know, because the Bible says that the heart is deceitful. You know, you know how there, a lot of people say that, Oh, trust in your heart, but you know, believe your heart. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says in Jeremiah, I'll leave a verse right here. It says that whoever trusts in their heart is a fool. Okay. So we're not trusting in our heart. We're trusting in the voice of God. We're trusting in the Holy Spirit and doing what the Holy Spirit says to do. Okay. So always remember that. Keep that in mind. When God is telling you to give up certain people and you know, you're like, okay, well, let me pray about it. Right. And that person continues to tempt you. That's a clear answer. So always pay attention to the signs. All right, number two. Oh, also, the Bible also makes it clear. How, how can I forget this verse? This is in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 to 9. It says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversity, the devil, as a warring lion, walked about seeking who he may devour. Whom, check this out. Verse 9 says, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. That's why I said in the beginning that I know some of you guys can relate to this. Whenever you try to, like, live, you know, repent. Uh, or maybe maybe you already gave your life to God years ago, and maybe you, you backslided, you fell short, or whatever, right? And you start to see those people just, you know, all of a sudden they're just popping up out of nowhere. Okay, that's spiritual warfare. You got to be in tune with the spirit so you can see this this world what it really is. Okay, number two is you go back into your old ways. Remember, I said that evil spirits can work through other people, and you may have those demons too. Okay, so it says you go back into your old ways, but I had to make sure I highlight it a non-repented lifestyle because the Bible makes it clear we all fall short, we all make mistakes, but when you're willfully given over to your sin, you're willfully go, given over to your backsliding and you just completely reject the Bible, you no longer want to follow God. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 12, verse 43 to 45, it says, 
when the unclean spirit, when the devil, when the demon, when the evil spirit, when the unclean spirit has gone out of a man, he walked through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. Then he said, I will return from the house from whence I came. And when he is come, he find it empty and swept and garnished. Then go he, he take with himself seven other spirits, more wicked than himself, and they that enter in and dwell there, and the last state of the man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be into this wicked generation. We're living in a wicked generation, okay? So the Bible makes it clear that when someone goes back into their old ways, and now non-repented, uh, you know, just willfully given over, the seven spirits are going to be worse than when he had those, the, those demons before, okay? Even so, it shall be into this wicked generation. So best believe when you go back into your old ways and you, you feel no need to repent, that's dangerous. You know, that could be evil spirit or that is an evil spirit, you know, um, keeping you in darkness and bondage. I'm going to explain that a bit too as well. So always remember when you go back into your old ways and you have an or just a non-repentant, non-repentant lifestyle. Okay. Jesus made it clear multiple scriptures. He says that repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It also says, unless you repent. Um, you will all likewise perish, okay? So that is very important to live a life of repentance, okay? This is the key every single day, okay? This keeps you spiritually strong, keeps you walking in the spirit, uh, keeps you more uh, connected to God, all those things, okay? Number three is following false religions. If you guys have seen my animations, I just made a video a couple of days ago that's uh, titled Two Hours Into the Spirit Realm or to the spirit, Spiritual World. And uh, pretty much, it was when I, when I talk about false religions, I'm not just talking about um, Buddhism, um, Islam, all those stuff, right? You know, all those other religions. I'm also talking about Christianity too. Okay, when you're following false the false doctrines, and you know, because the Bible says that the way is narrow and only few find it. If you look it up on Google, there's over two billion people who profess to be in Christianity. Okay, so you mean to tell me that all those people? Those two billion people are going to be saved, but even Christ says that only few will find the narrow gate. And the reason why they're following false teachings, false doctrines. I mean, we could go over uh, all the false doctrines. I already have multiple videos on that. That's not this what video is about. But best believe what demons do, they keep people in, uh, in bondage. They keep people in darkness of false religions, false doctrines. And best believe when you're following a false doctrine, it could, it could send you to hell. Okay, If you're over here believing that. Uh, you know, once saved, always saved, and I could live however I want. I could, you know, be a fornicator. I could be an idolater. I could have sex with uh, man's wives, and you know, I could, you know, uh, worship materialism. I could, you know, all, you know, practice witchcraft, and I don't have to repent because I'm already saved. Okay, that, that's what, what what it is. Is demons, evil spirits, keeping people in bondage? It's very important, guys. Check out my video. I'll leave the title over here, like a thumbnail, so you guys. I can't link. I'll probably link at the end of this video, but best believe. If you're following false teachings, false doctrines, uh, in, in all, or these false religions, okay, that are not connected to the word. See, this is one thing that I'm seeing in this matrix. People are religious, but they have no connection, no relationship with Jesus. They, ha they don't have the Holy Spirit. They just have a religious spirit, okay? The religious spirit and the Holy Spirit are two different spirits, okay? And I know this, is my, this might, you know, confuse people because they lack understanding, but this is the truth. And that's why I have a video. Check that out. If you're confused, okay, check out my video. Once again, I left it on the side, uh, two hours into the spirit world, watch the whole thing, it goes over that. But best believe demons also keep people in bondage. It's a false light, okay? It's a false light. All these religions, guys, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, this is it, okay? But you're just religious, you're going to church, you have no relationship with God, no relationship with Jesus, you're just spiritually dead. It's very, very dangerous, okay? Number four is, oh, this is deep, Oh, this is deep, man. You will have dreams of snakes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Every time I had dreams of snakes, okay, I'm, I'm every t ever since I gave my life to Jesus, right? For every time I had a dream of snakes, man, it could be 10 snakes, five snakes. It was always a sign from God that there was someone in my life who was a devil. Okay. There was someone in my life who was an agent. Okay. An agent of Satan. There was someone in my life who was playing both sides. That's always what it meant whenever I had dreams of snakes. Yes, God can speak to us in our dreams, okay? And that's God warning you. Whenever you have a snake in your dream, that means there's someone in your life who's and there's someone that you love, someone that you're close with, some or maybe some of y'all, you know, sleeping with sleeping with that person, okay? Or it could be a friend, a, a, a quote unquote brother in Christ. That's why we're supposed to test the spirits, okay? Uh, because you know Judas was a brother in Christ to Jesus, right? 
Uh, so always test people's spirits, okay? So every time I had a dream of a snake, it was always a sign from God letting me know there's someone close to me. There's someone hitting me up every single day. That, you know, there's always someone who I, I hold dearest to my heart or who I just, you know, just chill with, you know, on an occasion. Who is a snake and I got to keep my eyes open and I got to stay away from that person. Because what does a snake do? When a snake gets comfortable in your life, it wraps itself around you and it slowly starts to squeeze and squeeze. And then now you, you can't breathe. Okay, you put a snake on your neck, it slowly starts to squeeze, squeeze, right? And then 10, 20 minutes later, an hour later... You're, you're choked out. You can't even breathe. That's how a snake is. And that's exactly how these snakes came to my life. They're all, you know, all cute to the, with a little tongue out. <laughs> Looking all cute, right? But it was a devil, man. I'm telling you. So pay attention to your dreams, okay? God's always speaking to us in our dreams. And there's many times where weapons formed in my dreams, but they never prospered. Because no weapon formed against you shall prosper. So don't be afraid when these dreams happen. I never get afraid. I'm just like, oh, okay. Thank you, God, for showing me the sign. All right, number five is addictions okay like i said it could be working through other people or it could be your lifestyle of the evil spirit so addiction so it could be drug addiction alcohol addiction pornography addiction food addiction yes i mean i, I could go over multiple things but i feel like these are the four things that keep people in bondage today in this modern society we're living in uh best believe when you have an so this is how i know it's the evil spirit this is how i know it's a demon because i used to always be smoking weed every single day right i used to be watching pornography every single day um, all these things, right? I never really had an alcohol addiction, but when it came to, like, when I repented from, uh, drug use, when I repented from pornography, right? All of a sudden, I would have wet dreams. I'm telling you, and I, I, I used to watch, or, I, I'm saying pornography because I don't want to trigger anything, but y'all know what I'm trying to say. I was watching that every single day for, for, like, almost 10 years, okay? I started from, like, 12 years old, or actually more than that. I was started from, like, 12, 13 years old. And I stopped when I was like 24, 25. That's when I was becoming more spiritual. And I started to see like, this is like destroying yourself, okay? So that's like 12, 13, 14 years of bondage, right? And I finally gave it up. I finally gained wisdom. Thank you, God, for that. Finally gained knowledge that God blessed me with. I finally gained the Holy Spirit to see, okay, I got to give this up, right? And the Holy Spirit gave me the strength to give that up. And once I gave that up, remember 12, 13 years of it, I would get wet dreams. What is a wet dream? Is when you're having a, a, a intercourse with a succubus, with a demonic spirit. When you're having an intercourse in your dreams, that is not, you know, we used, sometimes we used to think that, oh, you know, it felt good. But that is a succubus. That is a demonic spirit you're having intercourse with. That's real. Okay, I know some people might laugh at that scoff because in the last days, there will be many scoffers who will walk after their own ungodly lust. But anyone who's spiritually in tune will know that is the evil spirit. God wouldn't want you having intercourse with a, in your dreams with some random person. That's not of God. Okay, so always keep that in mind. I'll, I would have wet dreams, demonic attacks for two weeks straight. But the Bible says, submit yourself, therefore, to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And I didn't have a wet dream for like over a year okay, after that. And then, you know, the devils, he's always, you know, trying to attack. Even though I haven't watched that stuff in over five years now, but he's always trying to, you know, attack you here and there. But once I gave that up, I had about five wet dreams in two weeks. That's not a coincidence, okay? Same thing when it came to drug use, okay? Once I gave that up, I think I was about seven years almost every single day. Um, or probably a little bit more longer than that. Once I gave that up, I would have massive headaches, uh, I would, you know, depression, it was all demonic strongholds, all demonic spirits being, uh, being set free. And those demons, okay, this is very, this is why you got to be careful playing with demons. All right, those demons, they didn't want to let go because they saw I was, my house was becoming clean. My temple was becoming clean and they know that they have to depart from it because demons can't dwell in a clean temple. Okay, this is why when you, when you do fall short and you do make a mistake, you got to repent instantly because if you're just giving over to that, those demons see that as an opportunity to destroy you, man. Okay, so addictions, best belief. All right, number six is having intercourse with random people. Yes, we're seeing that today in society where everyone's just having intercourse with everybody and, you know, uh, soul ties are being formed. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 15 to 17, it says, Know you not when you join your body into a harlot, two becomes one flesh. So soul ties are real. So let me tell you ladies something, right? If you're out here, because y'all ladies know, especially you ones who are spiritual, you know when you're when you're, you're having intercourse, when the man that you're attracted to, the man that you like, when you know he's on demon time, when you when you know he's a devil, y'all know that. So when you're when you have intercourse with one, right, and you guys, you know, you know, have a baby, what is that baby gonna become? Is it gonna become a child of God or a child of the devil? Let me tell you guys a Bible verse, and I know many people 
this might be too too much truth I'm dropping, but let, let's check this out. This is in this is in the Apocrypha, okay? To Ezra chapter five verse eight, it says, "There shall be confusion also in many places, and the fire shall be set out again, and the wild beasts shall change their places, and menstruous women shall bring forth monsters." Okay, where's another definition of a monster? A demon, a devil. Okay, so it says, "There shall be confusion in many places." Aren't we seeing that today, where everyone's confused about their sexuality, everyone's confused about their belief? You know. One minute, one minute they believe in God, next they believe in Allah, next they believe in Buddha, next they believe in crystals and sage and tarot cards. They're all, everyone just seems to be confused. And that's the spirit, by the way, the spirit of confusion, okay? So it says, and mentorous women shall bring forth monsters. This day and age, guys, righteous men are not really loved. The Bible says, woe to them that call evil good and, and good evil. It also says that, you know, in the last days that many people... Um, will hide themselves because wickedness will increase in the book of Proverbs, okay? So best believe when you're out here just having sex with anybody, when you're having intercourse with anybody with random people, and you know, ladies, y'all know, or even your brothers too who are having intercourse with these demons because some of these um, females y'all be sleeping with, they could be daughters of Satan. They could be succubus too as well. So when you're having intercourse with these type of females, don't be surprised that she, you know, you know, don't let uh, abortion kills your children, you know? you know, God forbid, or she does something like that. Don't be surprised. Cause so this is why you have to always wait on God and be patient because if you don't, it could cause a lot of, a lot of damage down the line. So don't, you know, you want to most importantly, wait for marriage, wait on God to send you your husband, wait on God to send you your wife. I know it might be hard, but you got to, you know, build, build up yourself for that situation to come. That could take years, months, and or some people who don't desire to be, you know, wife or husbands just want to give your body to the Lord. That's cool with that, too. But those who struggle with that, the Bible says it's better to marry than to burn. OK, so always keep that in mind. Number seven is ir ir irrational fear, suicide and confusion on what you believe. OK, remember that, that verse says there can be confusion in many places. OK, it seems like everyone is confused in, in nowadays. OK. So when you're living in fear, this has to, this used to be me too. When I first gave my life to God, when demons were literally tormenting me because all the doors I opened, those seven spirits were attacking me hard because they saw my temple was becoming clean, and they saw that I was fully I fully surrendered. There's nothing they could do that they have to eventually leave me alone. Because remember, submit yourself therefore to God, resist the devil, and he shall flee from you. James chapter four verse seven. Okay, so those demons are going to try to put fear in you. Those evil spirits. Okay, you never notice when you're sleeping at night in your room by yourself. And you start to hear things, um, you know, you start, y'all know, some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Those are evil spirits, okay? That means there's something that your life, that, in your life that you're doing that you're opening up for that to happen, okay? That's not just a coincidence. Those are evil spirits, okay? And a lot of people don't like to talk about this because, you know, you, like I said, when you talk about spiritual stuff to carnal people, it's just a joke to them. But this is real, okay? Um, suicide, okay? Yes, when, when you want to just into that deep depression where you just want to end your life because the Bible says thou shalt not kill. You know, so even when it comes to killing yourself, um, you know, that those are demons. Demons want you, they don't want you to go into the promised land. They don't want you to inherit eternal life. They want you to, you know, give up and just, you know, murder yourself. But the Bible says thou shalt not murder. And also most important to confusion, okay? It seems, whenever you're led to confusion about something, uh, you lack understanding, you lack wisdom, you lack knowledge, the most important thing you want to do, guys, when it comes to all, not just with that, when it comes to everything, okay? If you want answers from God, you got to fast, fast and pray and really surrender to the Holy Spirit. Stay in the Spirit, walk in the Spirit so you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. So these are the seven signs of the evil spirit in your life. I didn't want to make this long, but this is a lot of stuff I want to talk about. If you guys made this far, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to this channel, and share this video and all social media platforms. If there's anything I missed out, feel free to leave in the comments below. I love you guys so much. I'm out. Peace.